Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to read from an infrared obstacle avoidance sensor to an analog port on your Arduino board. So I've done a video before showing you how to read using a digital port. A digital port will simply either give you a low or a high value. If you use the analog port, it will give you a number. At the end of the day, it doesn't actually give you that much more functionality, but it's good to realize that there is a different way to be able to read from the infrared sensor and in a particular project you may find this to be a more valuable way to read from one of these things. So with that let's go over the workbench. I can show you the components that will be needed uh, for this particular lab, show you the code, and we'll put it all together. So for this particular lab, the only uh, important components are, again, your Arduino board. We're using the Arduino Uno board here and an infrared proximity sensor. So these are simply the major components that we'll need. Then to put all of this together, put this aside. Basically, you can see what I've created here. Now, what I have done is I have screwed the infrared sensor to a little base just so I can put it in a horizontal plane. That makes it a little easier to interact with since it is supposed to be an obstacle avoidance sensor. But other than that, all we need is the jumper wires here. So with this, what we're going to do is uh, the right hand side. So this is positive power. So this is going to be going to the five volt on the Arduino board. The middle uh, wire is for ground that will go to the ground connection on the Arduino board and then for the sensor wire for this particular project this will be going to A0 so this will be going to the analog side do you remember the digital side is along this side so along the right hand side here the analog side is the smaller section and that's below the power connector so we're going to be plugging this into A0 on the analog side and that's all there is uh, to wiring this thing up so let's go take a look at the code so here's a very simple code for this particular project. The first thing that we need to do is we need to define the infrared sensor pin. So we're going to do pound define IR, and that will go to A0, pin A0. Remember, whenever you're dealing with the Arduino board digital pins, you simply put the number. If you're dealing with an analog pin, you put the A in front of it, A0, A1, A2, so on and so forth. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a variable for reading. So basically, when we take a reading from the infrared sensor, we need to put, be able to put that value somewhere. So we're going to create an int variable called reading. Then all we're going to do in order to set up the environment is we are going to simply do serial.begin 9600. So this starts the service for the serial monitor. We don't need to do anything else. Again, since it's an analog pin, we don't have to set the pin mode to input. Analog will always be input. Then we're going to go down here to the loop. So this is a loop. We'll keep looping, looping, looping. So all we're going to do here is we're going to take that variable reading and we're going to make the value of that variable reading analog read function whatever is coming in through the IR pin. So analog read is a function that will read from the IR pin and then whatever that value is that will then be transferred over to the reading variable. Then all we're going to do is we're going to do serial.println reading so whatever the value of reading is then it will go to the next line and then we're going to delay for 500 milliseconds or approximately half a second uh, so that gives us an ability to read what's going on. So with that let's go over plug all this in and see how it works. So now we're going to plug all this in. So we're going to plug this in. We are then going to upload once it's finished uploading, we can go to tools, we can go to serial monitor, and now we get the number from this. So basically there's nothing now currently in front of the infrared sensor, so you're getting the number of 1023. If you bring something closer, 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 okay, now you're getting a number of 16 or 17. So basically, you know, if it's, if it's, above, it's above 16 or 17, then it's farther away than it can see. If it's a 16 or 17, then it is something that it can see. And this basically just gives you a number to work with. So if you're using the infrared sensor, again, you can connect it either to the digital port or the analog port. If you attach it to the digital port, then you're going to simply be looking for high or low. If for some reason, though, you want to be working with a number, this is a way that you can basically do an if-else statement based off of a number. So that's really all there is uh, to using and 
infrared obstacle avoidance uh, sensor using the analog port on the Arduino. Uh, whether, again, whether you use digital or analog, it probably really doesn't matter for most projects, but this does give you another option that works perfectly well. So that's all there is for taking the reading from the infrared obstacle avoidance sensor and reading it to an analog port on the Arduino board. At the end of the day, you more or less get the same result uh, that you do if you use a, the digital uh, pin for this. Uh, the difference being is that you get an actual number and maybe that might be important. Maybe you need to do something with a number within the, the sketch that you're creating for your Arduino. Maybe you need to multiply it by something or divide it by something or something like that. So basically Basically being able to get a number that might actually be valuable for you though at the end of the day it's yeah same same but different basically if you take the uh, the digital reading you get a high or a low if you take the analog reading you'll more or less get that one number uh, when it's close to something 15 16 17 and if it's far away you'll get like a thousand twenty eight something like that so again at the end of the day more or less you're getting the same results as if you use a digital reading but for some reason you may need a number and so this gives you an option and again whenever you're coding or building projects a lot of times simply having an option you may not use it very often you may use it once in your career but simply having that option available may be a lifesaver in a particular instance so that's all there is to it as always i enjoy doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one